Hey, Wiz, you know what time it is? Um, thanks to our sponsor, it's Miller time. You too can chill out with a delicious Miller Lite. Nothing simpler than taking a break from the internet to share some suds with your buds. Frankly, it sounds like a good time to debate this matchup. Or if we, you know, get the victor right. When there's a great tasting 96 calorie Miller Lite, friends should always come before followers. Here's to the original light beer, the original social media. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per ounce. Throughout the Earths of Marvel and DC Comics, there are hundreds, no thousands, of superheroes saving the day. But what if I told you there were even more across the multiverse? Oh great, as if we don't have enough to keep track of already! Miles Morales, the Spider-Man of Marvel's Earth number 1610. And Static, the electric genius from DC's Dakotaverse. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick! And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. At first glance, the world of Earth 1610 isn't so different from our own. But look closer and you'll find Coca Soda instead of Coca Cola, PDNY officers instead of NYPD. And a hamburger and fries can cost 30,000 goddamn dollars! But perhaps the greatest difference in this so called ultimate universe was that Peter Parker, the friendly neighborhood Spider Man, was dead. Enter Miles Morales. He was your typical kid from Brooklyn and didn't have much to worry about except his overbearing mom and dad. Hey kid, appreciate your folks while you have them. You never know when they're gonna pull a surprise Uncle Ben. Well, Miles spent most of his time with his more laid back uncle Aaron, who turned out to be a secret super criminal. Totally relatable. Anyway, during one of his heists into a secret lab, Aaron accidentally scooped up a spider. The next time Miles visited, the spider got loose and, uh, you know what happens. Miles, let's go. This spider carried the genetic enhancing Oz formula, yet another attempt to recreate Captain America's infamous super soldier serum. It had previously transformed Peter Parker into the first Spider-Man. Wait a minute, who came up with the idea to store the super serum in a friggin' spider? Eh, scientists can be weird sometimes. Maybe next time, put it in something that can't walk away. It's got eight legs, that's like four times more walking power. Uh, sure. Either way, with his new powers, Miles donned red and black to become the ultimate Spider-Man. As the newest spider lad on the block, he does whatever a spider can. He's super strong, super fast, and has the overpowered super radar, the spider sense. After meeting Peter's Aunt May, Miles took up the classic web shooters, complete with multiple types of long to short range webbing. Yet another tool that would be perfect for snagging a beer from the fridge without leaving the couch. Boomstick, he was a teenager. Different universe, different drinking laws, right? And also, like Peter, he can stick to walls. You know, spider style. Yes, like some spiders, Miles can control his body's interatomic attraction, essentially sticking to walls like a magnet. However, unlike Peter, this subatomic electron manipulation gave Miles a few extra moves of his own. Yeah, the kid's got electric powers! He can zap people with a quick touch, fire off massive explosions, and even turn invisible! Wait, what's that got to do with shocking people? This Venom Sting can even take out the Ultimate Universe's Electro, a being literally made of electricity. But Miles didn't just shock him, he disrupted Electro's own charge. Similar to a miswiring sending too much electricity in one direction and shorting out your computer when SOMEBODY forgot to plug it into the surge protector. Wiz, you know I don't believe in protection for anything. It's going in raw. Anyway, as the new Spider-Man, Miles obviously had a lot to live up to. After his Uncle Aaron died in front of him, HA! TOLD YOU SOMEBODY WOULD PULL A BEN! Miles pushed past the heartache. He persisted, living up to Peter's ideals, and eventually stepped out of his shadow to be Spider-Man in a way only he could. Oh yeah, what's up, danger? He can blast apart a building-sized monster and survived being slammed around by the giant Cassie Lang. That's Ant-Man's daughter. He's smart enough to hack military drones and quick enough to destroy an alien device in a microsecond. Essentially, he needed to open and close a portal in an impossibly short time frame to prevent an alien force from invading. It's a long story. Point is, he's super fast. 
With his spider sense, he can react to things before they even happen. He's super tough, too. He even survived being caught in this giant super collider exploding. Measuring the size of this hole using real-world maps of New York and solving for fragmentation, we know this explosion must have been equivalent to about 222 tons of TNT. Sure, that's not technically canon to the comics, but guys, main series Spider-Man has done way crazier things. I mean, he has the same powers, and Miles has even beat the crap out of him. Classic Pete can bench press 130 tons, use his spider sense to dodge beams of light, and ripped apart Doc Ock's robo arms, which once survived a two kiloton nuclear explosion. So I'd say the Super Collider feat checks out. Unfortunately, Miles' electric powers can tire him out, and his spider sense does not protect him automatically, serving more as an alarm or proximity sensor. But the youngins proved himself to be the best successor a Spider-Man could ever want, and more. He even got pulled into the main Marvel timeline when they blew up the Ultimate Universe. Miles Morales is truly one of the greats. Don't wash the mouth, wash the hands. Despite growing up in the most crime-filled neighborhood of Dakota City, Virgil Hawkins was a pretty chill guy. He spent his time playing D&D, reading comics, you know, typical nerd stuff. But he had one major problem, the classic sitcom bully. No teenage story is complete without it. During school, he was frequently harassed by local gang leader Francis Stone. Virgil's only refuge was one of his few friends, Larry Wade. Larry convinced Virgil there was only one way to get rid of Francis for good. Join his own gang and pack some heat. Things got, well, pretty intense, and Virgil wasn't having any of it. It was time to bail like DC Comics on their cinematic universe. But the damage was already done. The police arrived and let loose a massive canister of what seemed to be tear gas, but wasn't. Yeah, this grape-looking mist was actually some experimental shit. It was supposed to tag each gang member so the cops could track them down later, but it was actually laced with radioactive quantum juice, which killed almost everybody. I hate it when that happens. Luckily, Virgil was one of the few who survived, but the quantum juice still had an effect. You could say he was shocked to find out what it did. <sighs> yes, he began to develop electromagnetic powers. Before this, Virgil always felt out of his league, but now he was in a league of his own and became the superhero, Static. I put a shot to your system. Hell yeah! With these new powers, the guy was unstoppable. He could blow shit up with electric bolts quick as lightning, make explosion balls called Nova Bombs, and taser people with punches to the face. Right, but he's not just good at shocking people. Static can alter the electron attraction of any object or surface. He can erect extremely durable electromagnetic force fields that block most attacks. He can even move metal around like a hip young Magneto. And slip metal under his feet to take to the sky! His favorite ride is the Static Saucer, a giant frisbee that doubles as a shield and buzzsaw. Think about it, don't you wish your car could literally cut through traffic? Obviously, turning superhuman overnight caught Virgil a bit off guard, but after a few speed bumps, he became a well-regarded superhero throughout the city of Dakota, even teaming up with fellow heroes like Icon and Rocket. Icon and Rocket? Come on, where's Batman and Wonder Woman? Oh, I should mention that while Static is part of the DC Universe, he did not start there. See, Static was originally created by Milestone Comics, which eventually merged with DC. Their characters, including Static, existed in an alternate timeline known as the Dakotaverse. Then a guy named Dharma gained cosmic power and accidentally blew everything up, sending Static into the main DC timeline. It's really not too complicated. Uh-huh. I've actually been working on a device to peer into alternate timelines, but unfortunately it still needs... Button! Well now, old chap, what were we discussing but a moment ago? Oh, psych don't you know. Let's figure out who yacht wins a fatality card fuffle. Oh <laughs> yes, I'm mad as hops. Let's begin, my fellow Ultra Capadarian. I regret everything. Oh, I'll do it again! No! I'm sure that's fine. Well, no matter the universe, Static was always one-upping himself. He learned how to see ultraviolet light and how to make people glow. Wait, 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 what's that got to do with shocking people? That would be his ability to detect bioelectric auras. Static can also create power-draining plasma coils, disrupt the electrical impulses of others, and empower or heal himself by draining energy from outside sources. He can literally reattach his severed arm with shock power! I'm not even joking! Look at this! Since when could electricity do that? 
Clearly, Static has a lot of power at his beck and call. He can survive building-sized kabooms, lift hundreds of tons, and once turned this huge chunk of ice into slush in just a couple seconds. Based on the size of the ice and the required change in temperature for such a feat, Static must have output energy equal to 180 tons of TNT. He's quick enough to intercept lasers confirmed to be beams of actual light, which is pretty darn fast. And in the cartoon, he actually shoved some quantum juice in some lockers and launched them out of orbit. These are typical school lockers, which can weigh up to 30 pounds each. And fit approximately one nerd. To throw three of these into space, they need to be moving nearly 3,000 times faster than sound, requiring a throwing force equal to four kilotons of TNT. Damn! Okay, sure, that's not canon to the comics, but his electromagnetism could play tug of war with Superboy's telekinesis, which can lift four million tons. I'm not sure Static can go that far, but if he's anywhere close, it's still higher than throwing some lockers around. Though, despite Static's incredible power, insulators are his kryptonite, and he can run out of juice if he pushes himself too much. But the guy's one of the coolest superheroes who rarely got his time to shine. Heck, he was good enough to join the Justice League. I think even Virgil himself was shocked to see how cool he really was. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, all this talking has made me hungry for Blue Apron. Can healthy be delicious? Blue Apron is here to prove it can. It's a new year, and everyone's reevaluating their lifestyles. So why not try to improve your eating habits? It's OK if you don't know where to start. Blue Apron has you covered. You can make a plan just for you with their ever-changing mix of options. Vegetarian, plant-forward, Mediterranean, diabetes-friendly, WW-approved, 500 calorie or less, whatever you're looking for, they've got it. And it'll be sent right to your door. Also, if you're concerned you won't know what to do once you have the ingredients, Blue Apron has that covered too. Look, I know I'm not the best chef out there, but Blue Apron seriously helps me kill it in the kitchen. Isn't that the truth? With all the work we do here at Death Battle, figuring out a cooking plan was always a chore, but not anymore. So create a healthy mealtime routine that works for you in 2020. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, feed your soul. But right now, it's time for a death battle! For real? You attack me! Well, I got more than one electric psychopath to keep track of it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, sir. He got me a lot of power and responsibility. See the lock of my cool. I never swing away. I see you running out of your spells. Forgive me, but can I be honest? I'm fully transparent. You ride on trash cans. Me? Getting zipped? What's up with that? I call that the sugar touch. You ain't ready for the And I call this my taser punch. Boy. Huh? No more flying these days. Okay, you've got surprises, but so do I. Oh, 
All I gotta do is... What? Plasma coil. If you hadn't noticed, this electric biz is kind of my thing. Oh man! <sighs> that was tough. K.O. Looks like we're kicking off this year with a bang. Poor Miles, though. Honestly, I'm surprised how this turned out. At first glance, Miles appeared to have a good chance of victory. He was definitely physically stronger than Static. He would have totally won an arm wrestling contest. But Virgil's overwhelming electric power put him at a level above the young Spider-Man. Oh yeah, overall Static's feats were way above Spidey's, even when we scaled Miles to classic Peter Parker's biggest feats. Static definitely had the oomph to take Miles out, but Miles had no easy way to get around his force field. The variety of techniques at Static's disposal also rent many of Spider-Man's abilities moot. Like how Spidey's invisibility didn't matter when Static could light him up like a Christmas tree. And his speed was so similar to what the Spider-Sense could give Miles that the Super Radar wasn't that big of a help. Remember, just because he knew an attack was coming didn't always mean he could dodge it in time. And, well, shockingly, Static only needed to hit him once. See, his electromagnetic manipulation gave him control over Miles' wall crawling and other abilities. As soon as he got a hold of Miles' bioelectric aura, it was basically all over. But hey, Miles and all the other Spider-Men fight Electro all the time and they have no problem dealing with him. Why was Static any different? Simply put, every iteration of Electro pales in comparison. He has no feats of power that come even close to Static, and frankly, he's an idiot. This was a fascinating matchup, but... Oh no, not again! Yay! <laughs> Mr. Morales put up a jolly good show, and yet Mr. Hawkins had him outdone in breathtaking power, stalwart defense, and veritable versatility! Oh, he was just miles ahead of him, don't you know? The victor is Static. Hey, thanks for checking out the premiere of Season 7 of Death Battle. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below. And, hey, the card game is back in stock, so check that out on store.richdeep.com.